Uh, this is an oral history interview of Arthur Skybel on April the 18th, 2018. Uh, I am Mae Siebel. Uh, we'll be conducting the oral history for the Dallas Jewish Historical Society. Good morning, Arthur. Good morning, May. Welcome. Um, so, really interested in starting as far back as you know about the, the early history of your family. Well, I can go back to my grandfather, who was Chaim Skabelsky, and his wife was Esther Blumenthal Skabelski, and they were in Suwak, Poland, and they had ten children, my father being one of them. Uh, all of the boys came to the United States between 1913, and we were the last family to come in 1948. Everyone else had come before the war. There were five boys, or six boys and five girls, four girls, make it ten. Uh, none, of the, none of the girls came to the States, all of them perished during World War II, the Holocaust, and my grandparents perished in the Holocaust. Uh, the, my grandparents were in the timber and lumber business, kind of had a compound in Suvok with commercial on the street, houses along the sides going back where employees and family members lived, and a lumber yard in the, in the center. And they had a forest that they either owned or leased from the government, I don't know which. And that's how they got their timber. Uh, none of, none of, during the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century, there was really a movement to either move to Israel or move to the States, and a lot of the family came to the States. And actually, my great-grandfather's uh, generation uh, had, uh, again, I think 12 children. My grandfather was married twice. Great-grandfather was married twice. His first wife died. And a lot of my great-uncles came during the early part of the 20th century as well. So. so your family came to the States? We came to the States in 1948. My dad was, my dad was planning, but mom and dad were planning to come in 1938. His younger brother Albert was just reaching the age to get conscripted into the Polish army. As my father would say, it was no place for a good Jewish boy because my father had already been in the Polish army. And so he gave up his visa and my uncle came in 1938, Albert. Uh, we ended up marrying Norma Glassman from Greenville. And uh, my parents, during the, they bombed my dad's, they had cellars in which they had fish canned. My, Dad was in the fish cannery business with plants in, on the Baltic, and they lived in Warsaw. They bombed the plants the second day of the war. My dad says, I'd have never opened the cellars, because he was gone at the time, and mother said, yeah, right, you wouldn't. Germans just swept in, and they took everything. So my parents, my dad got back, my parents got back together and tried to come they, they wanted to go to Russia to get through Russia to an avenue of escape. And either it was going to be Denmark or Sweden. And uh, the guy they paid to, to take them, guide them through Russia, took them straight to police headquarters. They were in jail a year. They were tried. They were convicted. And then they were sent to two camps north of Siberia. And yeah. My dad tells a story that the guard there said, here you will live and here you will die. Uh, they literally, uh, he was in a camp where they slept outside and they just took paper, put it on the ground and that was, that was their mattress and that was the insulation between the frozen ground. 
fortunately, my dad spoke five languages, so because of that, he managed to get a job inside. He thinks that's what enabled him to, to survive life there. Um, How did they get out of that? The when the Russians that? joined the Allies during the war, the Polish government in exile had arranged for them to release all of their Polish citizens. My father still had his papers and prove he was a Polish citizen, so they let him go. Through a second cousin, he knew the camp that my mother was in, and she was in a place called Commissar SSR. Uh, he got out, he goes to Commissar, sees that mother is still in jail, in prison, and he finds a place to, to live, and he finds a job of all things working for the Russian government. He gets her out of jail, and we lived in Commissar and SSR for probably two or three years. I don't know the exact time period, and that's where I was actually born, although my birth certificate says Kogno, Lithuania. When we came to the States, that was the height of the Cold War, and my parents were just deathly afraid to let anybody know that uh, we had been in Russia. Mm -hmm. So, as the war ended, uh, or towards the end of the war, I should say, my dad was moved to a little town, and I can't remember the name, outside of Kiev. And that's where my younger sister Ruth was born. And we were there until the end of the war. They, uh, through Hyas, we managed to get from the Kiev area to the American zone of Germany. And we were in Lonsberg, Germany, in a displaced persons camp from 1945 or 6 until April of 48 when we got papers to come to the United States. And my uncle Archie, who, was, who came in 1921 in Albert, who had established themselves pretty well in Texas, uh, through the assistance of Lyndon B. Johnson and Sam Rayburn, got us papers as a family. It was a real problem trying to get papers as a family. We, get pa we got papers for Mother and Daddy, we got papers for Mother Ruthie and I, but not as a family. Finally, we got papers as a family. And we came to the United States on a converted Marine ship. It took about 11 days and uh, landed in New York and were met by Uncle Albert and Aunt Norma. Uh, and they and brought you to Texas. And then they then we took a train and came to Texas. Yes, we came to Dallas, lived here for about three months, and then moved to Lubbock. And ultimately, the, the brothers, a lot of the brothers, moved to Lubbock. We had a lot of family in the Dallas area. Uh, what took you to Lubbock? I guess Albert and Archie were going to to move there. They had. They bought a store there. They had a Sky Bells, ladies ready to wear there. They had a department store. Uh, Albert had an Al Alberts that were almost next door to, each, to Sky Bells, and Alberts were almost next door to each other. And the economy was the department store. And Dad uh, managed that store. Uh, it was quite an experience the first year we were here because none of us spoke English. So I, I remember. And how old were you? I would. We got here in April. I was five. I turned six in okay. in June, and I started the first grade not knowing how to speak English. That was an experience that first year. Uh, then uh, uh, my dad managed the store. They took lessons from a, a Texas Tech professor. Uh, who I remember him coming on his bicycle to the house as we were not far from Tech. And uh, my dad picked up English pretty quick, mother a little a little longer. And mostly we spoke Yiddish in the house until I guess we were in the, I was in third grade. Uh, and was raised in Lubbock. Had a, we had a nice lifestyle. It was, uh, my parents, his mother would say I'd never put my hand in water in Europe, 
whereas here they, they pretty much struggled. I mean, it was trying to, we came here with nothing other than a, a suitcase each, as I recall. And that was from being a pretty affluent family. And that was from so, being a, a fairly comfortable yeah. family, yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we managed, with the help of everybody. We moved to Lubbock, Albert moves there, Archie moves there, another uncle who came, the first one to come to the States, Jake Skybell, and his family moved there in the early 50s. And uh, so we had a core family there, and we had uh, a lot of family in Dallas. I had, Dad had a brother, Sam, who was in Dallas as well. Uh, Aunt Ida Goldstein, Dora Abramson, uh, Uncle Sylvan moved, was in Lubbock. He was actually a, my dad's uncle. Uh, Izzy Skybell was here as a plumber. Uh, American Plumbing, I think was the name of his company. Uh, so we had a lot of family in this area, and, and somehow we all ended up in Texas. The, the initial group came to the tex to Texas and to Dallas. Very interesting. Um, what do you recall about, I mean, you had a very difficult time. Your parents had a very difficult time. How did you celebrate your Judaism during these difficult times? Well, my parents came from, a, a, as I think most Jews from Eastern European, an Orthodox background, and uh, my father had gone through uh, Hader and, and all the religious schools, and then was uh, going on with his education when and uh, then stopped. But we, I think we were, we always, from my recollection, we always celebrated the holidays. Everybody knew that they were Jewish and maintained their Jewish kind. Uh, what they did in Europe, I cannot tell you. Yeah. Except that I can imagine that they did everything that, that we're doing here to some to some degree. I can I remember a number of Pesachs that we would have seders and um, our seders are usually 50 people, 40 of which were family and 10 were friends. <laughs> And guests, and I, we there was a, a funny story because all five brothers were sitting at the front of the table. All of them were reading, and all of them were, were at different places in uh, <laughs> in the story. So, uh, was there a synagogue in Lubbock? There was a temple. We got there. Lubbock had seventy five families, and it had a synagogue, and we had a full time rabbi. Huh? Uh, and it's still got 75 families. They're just different families. The city's grown tremendously. I say 75, I yeah. think it's still about that size. Uh -huh. I think they're having a little more difficulty supporting a rabbi today yeah. than we did back then. Uh, and I think the, the reason was that, that that was a congregation where all, I'd say half of the members were first generation Americans. And that was the community center for the, for the Jewish community. We all got together. We'd go to services. And as a teenager, I remember hating it, but my parents insisted that I go to services three Fridays a week, a week, a month, and then we could go one weekend I could skip. Yeah. Uh, so we, but we met with everybody and had a Sunday school. They were just lay teachers. Mm -hmm. But we learned everything. I think most of my Jewish kind I really learned and was at home. Was at home. Well, sure. For mother and dad. Yeah. Um, what brought you to Dallas? I was real active in youth group work and uh, with Tofty, Texas Federation of Temple Youth, and I was coming here all the time. I, I had made a number of friends. I debated for my high school and was always coming either to Dallas or Fort Worth and I decided that this this was a city I wanted to live in. And so I did after uh, 
after I got through college and got through law school, uh, ultimately I ended up in Dallas, which was my goal. And uh, you said earlier you had gone to Texas Tech for a couple of years and then you transferred to UT? I transferred to UT. UT had a program that after your junior year you could get into law school, so you save a year of schools and a year of expense that way. So uh, that's what I did, and uh, uh, as I think I said earlier, we had we had seven cousins at, at Texas at the same time. We didn't need fraternities; <laughs> we, had, we had our own, and uh, uh, we had a great time in school. What kind of law do you practice? Oh, it's been a general practice, but it's these days it's mostly an office practice, wills and estates. And, uh, probate, real estate, mostly. Mm -hmm. Tell me something about your family here, your own family. Uh, I, I've been married a couple of times and got divorced, so I have two children. Uh, Jason is lives here, uh, somewhat of my problem child, but he, he's a good kid. He's doing construction work. My daughter, Adrian is married uh, to, oh, I told you she could marry anybody she wanted to, but not a lawyer. I said, we need some more doctors and dentists in the family. And she marries a lawyer. Uh, she marries uh, Justin Roy, uh, who is from a South African family. And they're living in Dallas as well. Uh, they have one daughter. Jason is not married. Uh, we all get together fairly regularly. That's great. So you have a granddaughter. I have a granddaughter. Yeah. How she, is she? She's a doll. She is seven, okay. Amelia. So she's in the first grade this year. So uh, she's wonderful. Uh, what do you feel your legacy will be for your children? Well, I hope I instilled in them that feeling of being Jewish that I that my parents instilled in me because I think it definitely was instilled in the home and I'd like to instill that and and a need to to be successful and and give back to the community what you get out of it and hopefully they'll they'll do that have you been active in any Jewish organizations here in town I I wasn't real active until, I guess for the last 10 years, I've been active in uh, Dallas Hebrew Free Loan. I've been on the board, I was president for a two-year term, and I still remain active as an ex-officio member of the board. Uh, I've always been part of federation and contributed in uh, various activities through the J. I've always participated and been a member for years. Anything else you'd like to tell us about your family history? We've got, uh, I grew up in Lubbock with uh, four, eight, ten cousins. All of us lived in the about six block area of each other. And uh, just, it was, you know, for a little town, I think when I left, in 1962, Lubbock had 50,000 people. And my mother, we were sitting, she was putting clothes on the line in the backyard and the neighbor behind her came up to her and uh, said, I've never seen anybody Jewish before. <laughs> and uh, so mother was not in a great mood that afternoon. She said, well, you should have seen me before I had my tail and horns cut off. Oh. <laughs> But I, she tells that story. The uh, my folks would were tell it would tell me when we were trying to get to the uh, back in in 1945 uh, after, as the war ended, trying to get to the American zone of Germany uh, that they were definitely afraid that one of us was going to cry or scream or talk or do something uh, as we were trying to get through the lines. So. We managed, uh, they, uh, I 
can remember, uh, we lived in an era, I guess we had in a garage apartment, it's what we had in, in Lonsburg. And there was a, we were from, I, I can just think of a block, because they actually blocked off the area. Uh, my mother's sister, my mother came from uh, a family of four girls. Her dad was a tea merchant, but he was, his avocation was really supporting Israel and Zionism. They were, they were avid Zionists. And uh, all of the girls, except for mother and my Aunt Eva, were lost in the war, and her parents. Uh, so that's really about all I can tell you. Well, you have quite a story to tell, and thank you so much for doing this for us. Well, that was my pleasure. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay.